exactly what defines a recession. Welcome back to On The Move, I'm Julie Hyman. Well, he's a four-time NBA champion, one of the greatest players to grace the NBA. Post-basketball, he's added entrepreneur to his resume, and he's here to talk about his latest venture. It's called Steady. It's a platform for gig workers to track income and manage finances. Joining us in a first on Yahoo Finance, Shaquille O'Neal, and the co-founder and CEO of Steady, Adam Roseman. Gentlemen, thank you for coming in. Appreciate Thanks it. For having us. So, um, first of all, I want to get a little bit of background on Steady and what exactly it is. So, if you're a gig worker, and there are a lot of them now, an increasing number. What does this do for them? Sure. So if you're a gig worker today, the likelihood is that you have very high income volatility, right? The average user on Steady's platform has about 30% month over month income volatility. So one of the hardest things to do is to find work when you need it, extra income. So today you go to the Steady app, you enter your zip code, and you see a list of extra income opportunities. You can further refine those based on your qualifications. Um, as we carry forward, we're uh, sort of half workforce, half fintech, in that we connect to people's financial accounts so we can actually see how they're earning, how they're performing. And when you put all of that data together, um, you're able to come up with a really nice picture of how are the best ways for people to earn based on their skill set, geography, and a variety of other factors. So, Shaq, where do you come <laughs> into this? I mean, because, you know, obviously you don't have a regular day job. You're not a salary guy anymore. So, you, in a way, you're a gig worker, I guess. Well, not only that, when, when I met Andy, he said, do you want to help people help, help them build a sustainable income? And I said, sure. And we started talking about gigs. And... It took me back. Uh, my mother and father both had extra jobs, you know, to put, you know, uh, shoes on my feet, clothes on my back. So, you know, I joined the steady team and I was part of the research. And during the research, I actually went out and sat with people. You know, I sat with gig workers and they talked about why they were doing it. You know, a lot of people do have jobs, but they just want an extra income to pay extra bills or they had extra kids or they wanted to go on vacation. And it's approximately about 70. 70 million people, including people that have jobs that, that really do gigs. So, you know, we also want to ensure that the app is very, very easy for people where they can come on. And if you want to just, just build a sustainable income and get extra income, we can help you out. Just go to your phone, download Steady. So I think that uh, this is kind of interesting in the current gig economy that we live in. It's a different time uh, than 20, 30 years ago. So when it comes to this app, I mean, do you guys consider yourselves to be a competitor to uh, like a monster or an Indeed? And then or Shaq, Fiverr I mean, for, for that yeah. matter. Right. And then how do you get the word out? Because I think in a lot of cases, yeah. it's not that there aren't jobs out there. It's just people can't find them. Well, uh, we, we don't um, view ourselves as a competitor to those. And the reason is, is that who is their customer, right? If you look at Indeed, Monster, Fiverr, their customer is the employer. Their customer is the contracting party, right? Their, their solution is tuned to create the best possible experience and outcome for the individual or the company that's paying the bill, right? For us, our customer is the user. Right. There's not a platform today that focuses on creating the best possible outcome for that hourly worker, for that low-skilled worker that exists today. They're left on their own to go to Monster and type something into a search bar. Well, if you've been doing retail customer service for 10 years, what are you going to type into that search bar? Retail customer service, right? Where's the ability to move up, to actually get on an, a, a path of ascension going forward? There's nothing that provides people with guidance today. Uh, Shaq, let's talk about your business approach. You've worked with mm -hmm. a lot of different brands, Ring, the, the doorbell, you've done general insurance, you've done Krispy Kreme, but having covered sports business for a number of years now, I've noticed a shift. I think your work with Papa John's is a good example. Athletes no longer just take a fee and appear in an ad. More often, they want equity in the company. They get a stake, or in your case, joining the board of Papa John's. Tell me about that shift. Have you seen that sort of across uh, retired athletes like yourself, and, and how do you think about which companies you want to partner with? Well, to be honest with you, I don't really pay attention to what other people are doing. You know, my, my style and my method has always been if it's going to help other people. And I heard the great Jeff uh, Bezos say that that's how he invests in things. If it's going to change people's lives, help people, and it's good. So when I first met Andy and, you know, we started talking about steady, of course, everybody wants extra income. So I thought it'd be good. Uh, the Papa John situation, I, I realized that there was a problem there. They didn't have any diversity on the board and <clears throat> always wanted to become a franchisee, not for money purposes. One day I was uh, reading an article and it was talking about the best retired athletes, businessmen, and I thought my name was going to be at the top. So when I saw my name wasn't at the top, because look, I'm a competitor, I like challenges, it, it, it you know, got me to thinking. So it was, I, I was number four. Then Magic Johnson, then Michael Jordan, then a, a fellow by the name of Junior Bridgman. 
Oh, yeah. Wendy Bridgman owns a lot of Wendy's. So I was like, you know, I want to get in the franchise business. I used to be in the franchise business, had uh, 155 of uh, uh, five guys, sold those. I was like, what can I do now? And then I saw the Papa John's. Uh, Papa John's in college was big for me because that's what I ordered. And so, you know, when I met with uh, <clears throat> uh, Steve Ritchie and uh, Jeff Smith, I said, I would like to be involved if, if I could be on the board and if I could purchase a couple of franchises. Um, so what that sort of brings me to the idea of retired athletes and what they should do. I mean, there's a lot of challenges for athletes who are currently playing. We've seen some recent examples of people who have had financial troubles. What would you tell them, both while they're still playing and then after they retire, in terms of any investing advice you would give them? Well, I would tell them, don't always try to go for the quick money uh, scheme. Every time I made an investment based on I was going to double or triple or quadruple my money, I lost every time. Every time I just took my time, did my due diligence, did my research, thought about it. My first major investment was Google. And the guy said, hey, in the future, not now, in the future, phones, <laughs> search engines, mm -hmm. this, finding the information. I was like, that's going to work. That's going to work. It's not going to work now, but in, I can see it in the future it's going to work. So that was the first time I, I really started thinking and about investing the right way. And then I just look at you know, what everybody else was doing. You know, Jeff uh, Bezos, a lot of other you know, successful entrepreneurs, and I would just try to, you know, follow their styles. And, you know, the companies that I partner up with, my, my style is that if I don't believe in your product, I will never partner up with you. I actually found Ring by accident. It was my first time not being a spoiled rich brat. And <laughs> what I mean by that is I used to live in private communities, so now in, in Georgia, I live amongst the people. I still wanted to have some cameras around the house, so I called a security company, and their quote was 80000 like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> called another one, their quote was 50000 So I'm at Best Buy, and I see this little ring camera, and I buy a couple of floodlight cameras, and it works like a charm. So then I go to the uh, conference in Vegas, uh, a technology conference, and I met with Jamie, and I was like, you know what, let me help you get the word about how beautiful and how fabulous this ring is. It's affordable. It works as well as all my other top security things that I have in my house. Like I have a lot of cameras at my house, but I can't get access on the phone. Mm. So when I saw that, I was like, "This, you know, people people need to know about this." And then, luckily, we were purchased by Amazon for a billion. So, I just, I don't, I don't ever think about making money. I just think about doing the right thing, just having fun. And, you know, for example, with Steady, if we can help people find extra gigs and get extra income, if we can help in that way, I think it's something positive. Do you think that advice works for normal people also, sort of investing in things that aren't going to see a quick return but maybe are a good longer term bet? I, I never want to sit up here and act like I'm an expert. It worked for me. I don't want to say you should do this. I just want to say that it, you know, worked for me. Shaq, people love talking about uh, you and Kobe. Mm. And, you know, beef and then became friends. And Kobe's a really mm. interesting entrepreneur in his own right. He's doing a lot with tech investing. He did an interview just the other day where he was talking mm. about uh, your work ethic in mm. basketball. He said, he said if the work ethic had been higher, it could have been even better. We could have won even more rings. I thought that was interesting if you apply that to business. What do you make of that? Make of what? His comments on your work ethic. Whose comments? Kobe's. Uh, was he saying that to me or was he saying that to uh, all the statues that I have in front of the Staples Center? Because <laughs> he wasn't talking to me. Do you watch work what he's doing in business? No, of course not. Never. Never. My work ethics, you know, speaks for itself. Uh, Good thing about me is I did it my way. My way has been been very, very effective on and off the court. And, you know, people have to stay relevant somehow. But we're here talking about positive stuff, getting people jobs, you know, help getting people uh, uh, extra income. I don't, I don't, you know, buy in, into uh, any of that. So this coming Three up. Three finals MVPs, four <laughs> rings. Not bad for a guy who didn't work out. I was going to say, are you going to compare your, uh, your investing portfolio to Kobe's? No, I don't. Say? You know what? I was... I'm not from this planet, and I don't really compete with man. I just, you know, just try to do the right thing. I just try to make people smile. The day after I retired, my mother grabbed me with my shirt and she said, "Son, you, you've 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 done everything that I've asked you to done, but what are you going to do now to make other people happy?" That's what I think you should focus on. So that's what I'm focusing on: just making other people smile, making other people happy. You know, just doing positive stuff. Shaq, Lakers, Clippers, this year, who's going to be better? Neither. Sacramento Kings. Ooh, because. I'm part owner of the Sacramento Kings. <laughs> That's why. Smart. No Lakers, no Clippers, no Knicks. What's going to give the Kings the edge, then, besides your investment? Aaron Fox. Obviously. No, De'Aaron Fox is, is, is fabulous. You know, Vivek and, and Vladi, they're doing a wonderful job of 
building a team, building a culture. And, you know, we got some young guys. We're like one or two pieces away. Marvin Bagley was kind of injured up, banged up last year, but I think he's going to come around. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Appreciate it. I love your work. I love your work. I don't really... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jackie. And I just want to give you an apology now. I didn't mean to smash your finger last night at the bar when you. Yeah, it's okay. I'm going to recover. <laughs> okay. Give me a minute. Make a full good. recovery. That's good. That's good. I've been telling people basketball right. injury. Yeah, yeah, you're right. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thanks, All right, guys. Good.